Happy Father's Day, everyone. And let's make sure we remember what that means. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is another Declaration of Truth from your host, Terry A. Hurlbut. And today, I'm going to talk about Father's Day, how it started, and what fatherhood is all about. Father's Day is a good time to remember our fathers and to remember the essential role fathers play in families and in civilization. But our society seems to have forgotten how important a father is, so it's time to remind ourselves. Before I begin, I want to shout out to the sponsor of this channel, which is Conservative News and Views. Link in the description. Be sure to check out the awesome CNAV store. Scroll down near the bottom for that link. Lots of good merchandise there, including this t-shirt, which I hope you can read. It reads, Rhino Hunting. While I'm at it, I want to shout out to another sponsor, Bitnext. This is your replacement for Zoom, Slack, the Google G Suite, Microsoft Office 365, Dropbox, WeTransfer, and Chili Piper, among others. Unlike any of them, Bitnext protects your content and conversation so well, even the administrators can't see it. So this is your channel for secure comms, conferencing, cloud storage, and file sharing. Best of all, everything is back in. You don't even need client software. If you have a browser, you can use Bitnext. Follow the link and give them a try. 28 days free of charge. You can't beat that with a stick. All right, ladies, and especially you gentlemen. Now it's time for some instructive lessons in history. We begin with where Father's Day came from, courtesy of the History Channel and YP Discover. Like so much else, the Father's Day custom started in a church. The first service to honor fathers came out on July 5th, 1908 near Monongah, West Virginia. In the winter of 1907, more than 360 coal miners from Monongah died in an explosion. But mass casualty events usually have another kind of casualty. Those the prime casualties leave behind. In this case, we're talking about 200 widows and more than a thousand children who now didn't have fathers anymore. So Grace Golden Clayton, of the nearby town of Fairmount, proposed a memorial to honor those 200 fathers and their buddies. But this was a one-off event and did not have any staying power. But in 1910, Sonora Smart Dodd of Spokane, Washington proposed an official holiday uh, for fathers. She took inspiration from a sermon on Mother's Day. Mrs. Dodd had good reason to want to honor fathers her own. William Jackson Smart had raised her and her five siblings alone after their mother died in childbirth. So she shared her idea with local churches, merchants, the Young Men's Christian Association, that's right, the Y. Huh. And with state officials, Washington State celebrated the first Father's Day on June 19, 1910. Thus today, the 113th Father's Day happens to fall on the same date as the first. Other countries have copied Father's Day from the United States, but usually not on the same day. The American Father's Day falls on the third Sunday in June, as it has from the first. Now, how important are fathers? Fathers are very important to families and have been since the creation of man. Nor does fatherhood limit itself to human beings. True, uh, true enough, most animal species have little use for the male other than siring. Male insects usually die after mating, except for the king termite. Bull, moose, and elk, and deer, and antelope bucks typically appear during rut and then disappear from the rest of the year. But human fathers have definite duties, and when they ignore them, or when circumstances remove them, the results can be disastrous. A father demonstrates not only good behavior, but also the concept of responsibility. Families, at least well-working families, expect the father to provide, protect, and command. A good father teaches a child by example. 
if not always by direct precept. But a good father never exploits. The Bible has many examples of good fathers and bad fathers. For good or bad, children learn from their fathers. Solomon learned from David. Sadly, Solomon did not provide good lessons for his son and heir, Rehoboam. So Rehoboam's reign was a disaster. Not only did he lose 83% of the kingdom, but he almost lost it all in a disastrous war with Egypt. Likewise, Ahab provided a horrible example as a father to his daughter, Ataliah, who tried to secure her throne by murder. Now, can a man do better than the father? Yes, rarely a son can overcome the lessons from a bad father if he has another man in his life to teach him the right way. We saw that from at least five of the kings of Judah, Asa, Joash, Uzziah, Hezekiah, and Josiah. We can assume that the high priest in each case intervened when each man was young. In some cases, scripture makes that explicit. More often, the son either follows the father's example or else does not have an example to follow. The National Fatherhood Initiative has facts and figures to back this up. In fact, I'm going to leave a link in the description to their Father Absence Statistics page. It has a wealth of material. They illustrate their points brilliantly with posters that really catch the eye. Now, according to them, with, uh, without fathers, children are more likely to live in poverty, have behavioral problems, die in infancy, go to prison, commit a crime, become pregnant as a teen, suffer abuse and neglect, abuse drugs and alcohol, grow obese, drop out of school, and or kill themselves. Nor does fatherlessness limit itself to a household that doesn't have a father. Fathers who neglect their homes often see the same results as if the fathers were not present at all. This shows that fathers must be not only present, but involved. Today, a small but vocal minority, probably of persons who suffered from father absence themselves, think fathers are superfluous. We see fiction and drama that insults fathers and shows mothers and children getting along just fine without them. Now try to remember, when you see such dubious art, that it is fiction and fictional drama, not true biography. This vocal minority tries to excuse their position by saying that some children are better off fatherless. Well, they might be better off fatherless than with a dangerous and abusive father, but that does not make them well off. Some who try to make the case for fatherlessness end up proving the need for fathers. Jamil Giovanni, writing in The Guardian, provided a prize example two years ago. I quote, If you choose the right inspirations, growing up without a dad can be a gift. But, as the title of Jay-Z's album, Blueprint to The Gift and the Curse, suggests, there's a flip side. Many of us who spend Father's Day wishing we had somebody to celebrate with haven't chosen the right influences as substitutes. We might not be making any choices at all." Unquote Jamil Giovanni. And Jay-Z himself boasted of the freedom to choose one's ancestors. But here's the point. How do you know you're choosing the right ancestors? You don't. This Father's Day, let's remember what a father should be and why children need fathers. A father has an awesome responsibility, which is why Sonora Smart Dodd had the right idea 112 years ago. Father's Day is a time to celebrate the role of fathers. It is also a day for sons to contemplate the responsibility to which they will someday succeed. Links in the description of the article to the National Fatherhood Initiative landing page with the father absence statistics and to conservative news and views. I have another link to the awesome online store and to Bitnext, as I also mentioned. And if you like this, what you've heard, you can like this video and subscribe to this channel. This is Terry A. Hurlbut delivering another Declaration of Truth and reminding you to let the truth set you free.